All right, ladies and gentlemen, breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Uh, Coach Adrian Griffin has been fired from the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, first time head coach, only been a head coach for about how many games have we played this season? <laughs> Literally, barely more months? than half the season. 30, Thirty-five, bro. Yeah, thirty-five. No. They're at game 43. They, he literally barely made it halfway. Yeah. Uh, only been coaching for about 43 games. 30 and 13. Bucks are second in the Eastern Conference. Um, I think that I saw some um, I saw some statistics on what the Bucks rank. Let me pull that up real quick. Uh, they are second in offensive rating, 21st in defensive rating. Uh, but they're like high in rebounds or some stuff like that. Fourth in pace, uh, not not a bad team at all. Again, second in the Eastern Conference, and Coach Adrian Griffin um, has been fired. Um, there's some more stuff that I want to get into, specifically some speculatory stuff. But how, how do y'all how do y'all feel about you know what happened? I'm typically a defendant. Um, not 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 to the um, level of my my uh, co-host Omizi here, but um, I've typically been more reserved on coach firings. However, this one I think is an exception to the rule because, as Damo has illustrated several times, another one of my fantastic co-hosts, the Bucks for some unknown reason aren't it defensively. And if you like name the names on the Bucks roster. Hell, we've seen th these names play together before. We've seen Bobby Portis, Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Brooke Lopez, it, it, even some of the other players. It's just a matter of like, wow, this team is not that good defensively. Um, you could argue an effort level if you have to be pro coach here, but I'm not going to lie. that it. I think he was just getting carried. <laughs> I think he was getting very carried. Very much carried here. I'm not necessarily mad at the firing, but I always will say, who the hell do you hire? And that I don't know at this moment in time. Oh, there's an answer, Sage. Oh, no. There, there is an answer. Be so, you know who the answer is? The doc is in, man. Oh. The doc is in. Oh, yeah, no. 2008 championship level coach. He's done it before. Why can't he do it again? Oh, uh, please, no. Nastily, nastily enough. His own advisor, Adrian Griffin's own advisor, uh, Doc Rivers, and supposed to be finals host, but he'll be, he'll be taking a step down and or taking a step up, going from announcer to coach again. That is the front runner, and front runner so bad that they are literally talking about contract negotiations like right now. Oh, no. Okay, That's well. Like, yeah, That's NBA Bill Belichick, man. Come wow. on. Can, can I change my take? <laughs> Well then, let me let me put all the information out so so you can you can have the best informed takes for those that haven't seen. Um, Doc Rivers is the front runner for this position. Um, again, so bad that they are like really really in talks about what the contract and bringing all these things look on and all this stuff. It's nasty because Doc Rivers was Adrian Griffin's advisor, first year coach, black coach. He needed an advisor. You know, he hits up Ty Lu. Hey man, who is your mentor? Doc Rivers. Right? Calls Doc Rivers. Can you mentor me? It's Doc Rivers. Um, another another fact that I should put out there, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo reportedly lost faith in Adrian Griffin. Mm. Reportedly lost faith in Adrian Griffin. Uh, I just got this strange, strange interview. Um, a, this is from October 4th, 2023. Adrian Griffin told reporters that both Giannis and Damian Lillard did not practice or participate in today's practice. He also told us Chris Middleton did not fully participate. Here's the back and forth uh, we had with him to try to figure out what's going on with Middleton. Um, interviewer asks, was Chris available today? He says, not live on the court, but he's been very productive with his individual workouts, and he's been working his way toward getting back to five-on-five -five basketball. So what he's done the last few days has not been a surprise to you because he said he has no pain and feels great at media day. Adrian Griffin says, no, no. We got time on our side. We're just being smart. He's been working diligently. Reporter, what's ailing him? Does it have to do with his knee? Adrian Griffin, just us being smart, just not rushing the process. He's doing great. Reporter, is it fair to say the plan is October 26th? Chris will be ready to go. Adrian Griffin, just day to day, just taking it one day at a time now, 
but he's progressing beautifully. Um, Adrian, or the reporter, does this feel like something you're going to have to manage all year? Like, is it a problem? Adrian Griffin, what kind of problem? The fact that he's not practicing right now and you're trying to ramp him up. Who? Chris. Is whatever he's dealing with a long-term concern? And then Adrian Griffin says, what's popping up for Chris? What? And he's, the reporter says, I- I'm trying to figure out why he's not practicing. Adrian Griffin says he's not live practicing, but he's progressing. Are we taking it day by and we're taking it day by day and we're just being smart and we're not rushing the process? The interviewer says, is it fair to say he is not cleared? Hey, yo, he is not cleared for three on three or five v five yet. And that's be, that's what you're waiting for. Adrian Griffin says he's cleared to be where he's supposed to be. And he's right on time. The reason why I read that is because people speculate as to that's where. He lost the locker room. October 4th, 2023. That's what they're pointing at. Did the mm. season even start? Hey. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I, my, my feeling towards this is honestly relatively similar to my feelings um, when there were conversations about, like, should we fire Joe Mazzula for the Boston Celtics? Um, it's just unfortunate that a lot of first-year coaches, uh, specifically recently, have been put in situations high, very high pressure situations where they have championship expectations out the gate. Uh, we're talking about uh, Ime, uh, Joe Mazzula, Darvin Ham, um, Adrian Griffin. Um, and then when they're deemed as this, this guy who's not ready to coach a championship level team, now they get the cut cord, uh, the, the cord cut from them prematurely, in my opinion. Um, when, in my opinion, all pun intended, they didn't really get their fair shake, to be honest with you. <laughs> They didn't get their fair shake. They need a little bit more time to become the coaches that they need to be. But at the same time, I understand when you trade for Dame, you got the squad that you got. You are in cha- uh, championship win now mode. So if you don't feel like Adrian Griffin is that dude, then I kind of understand. Yeah, I'm not gonna act like I don't understand the firing whatsoever. But it's a, it's an unfortunate situation. I would say that um for me personally, this didn't really come as much as a surprise. Um, earlier, uh, even before the season started, I want to say before the preseason, what's his name in the uh, – Quinnen, uh, Terry Stotts, the mm-hmm. assistant coach who was the head coach of, I believe, the Trailblazers before coming over and taking his job, he quit. He, he flat out quit, and the rumors were that Adrian Griffin was so bad, he jumped ship. Like, he, he just mm-hmm. – if they weren't going to give him control, he was going to leave because this guy didn't know what he was doing. That was the rumor. And I was like, ah, oh, there's no way. We're at least going to see him through the season and see what he can do. The fact that they fired him mid-season, and this is the same mid-season where us as Laker fans say, we were sitting here, man, I don't like Darvin Ham, but yo, it don't make no sense to fire him, especially if we're trying to make a push. And the Bucks are seen as a w- way more of a title contender than the Lakers. In For my sure. Opinion. For sure. They're seen as definitely more of a contender than the Lakers, and they fired him halfway through the season. And basically said, hey, Doc, you've been watching us long enough and calling the games. You might as well call the shots, too. That's insane work. <laughs> like, how bad at, – like, I understand I think Darvin Ham's bad. Darvin Ham ain't even that bad, I guess. That is crazy. At least we were like, you know what? We can't risk losing the coach and jeopardize the season. They said, we don't care. Giannis and Dane will carry the ship. It, it had to be – they had to have an all-players meeting to go to management and say, get him the hell out of here. That's crazy. Mind you, they don't even necessarily believe entirely in Doc because they have no faith in uh, uh, Adrian. And if Doc was mentoring Adrian, what kind of – you know what? Maybe that's too lateral or obtuse there. Uh, my my whole thing, and the reason why I said that I'm going to change my take a little bit is because I always ask, who are you going to hire? Now, if you're going to hire somebody that's relatively in his camp, unless you think they think entirely different – or the uh, coach was proven to have been more successful, which I guess he has. But it's like I I don't like I don't like when um championship contending teams hire coaches that prove that they don't have the the pretty much any potential to win a championship in in the modern day and age of basketball. Like when when we can argue a coach like Mike Budenholzer overachieves. 
or a coach like uh uh, uh what's the other one? I'm I'm blanking. I'm blanking. Monty Williams overachieved stuff like that. Fine, go for it. Frank Vogel is another one. Fine, go for it. You want to call the ring Mickey? That's fine. But the idea of hiring a coach that since 2008 is just a perpetual. I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but it kind of has to sound that way. Perpetual loser. The, the nigga is just straight up not it. He just cannot do it. I, I would go down and name every season, but I don't want to hog the mic here. But, my God, he just he's just proven to be the problem. He's had many different rosters, many different superstars. And, in fact, half of the superstars don't even play the fucking same. They're not even at the same position in the case of Philly. So, it, it's just I, I don't like moving on if it's Doc. However, if he lost the locker room, if he's doing things behind the scenes where it's just making life hell and you got to fire him, then I guess you got to fire him. But uh, I don't I don't like the Doc Rivers hiring at all. I I want to say this because there's a let me say this there's a lot of news going around the Adrian Griffin fire, a lot of a lot of stuff saying that um, it has nothing to do with basketball. There's a lot of speculation about him and his grandson and his involvement in his grandson's death, which I found out today, and that's mm. kind of crazy. He had a two year old grandson that died last year, and they're saying that he might have some involvement. Don't want to get into that. Uh, I'm seeing in the chat now that, what? yeah, yeah. I'm seeing in the chat now apparently um, something about Adrian Griffin firing Damian Lillard's friend and, and they kind of losing each other there. I, I don't want to get into that. What I want to get into is the stance that I've maintained routinely on this podcast about coaching. It is not greener on the other side. <laughs> The Milwaukee Bucks and the fan base um, are spoiled brats. They spoil no, 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 spoiled, spoiled brats. You don't know what it's like to have bad coaching. You don't know. You don't, you, you don't have Chauncey Billups. You don't have washed Greg Popovich. You don't have Darvin Ham. You don't you don't have that guy when you have Mike Budenholzer. And and I understand you have championship aspirations and blah, 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 but you nitpicked a situation that didn't need to be picked at. You know, y'all got that scab that really doesn't need to be picked at. You just, can, you just constantly picking at it, and then all of a sudden you pick it off and it's just pouring blood, and, and now you're, damn. Well, if you wasn't picking at this scab, it would never did anything. I don't think that Budenholzer was the best coach, revolutionary, all time, whatever, whatever. I do think he was one of the better coaches in the league. Top 10, top five. I'm just throwing that out there. But to get greedy, and now you're seeing the spiral that you're about to go down, I saw some other names on that list. It's the same names. If it's not Doc Rivers, it's going to be Jeff Van Gundy, or Mark Jackson. The, oh. same, <laughs> the same names. Oh, my God. Three Stooges, man. The, the the dumb dumber and dumber Ed Ed and Eddie <laughs> Ed Ed and Eddie are about the three stooges about to be your coach. So so now you sit here in a situation where you had, let me see what they ranked defensively. What, what did they? What, what y'all think they ranked defensively last year? This year they are second. Uh, they only ran jump coverage. Oh my god! Last year they were twelfth offensively, fourth defensively. The year before that they were third defensive or third offensively. Stop with the jump coverage. Defensively. The championship year, they were sixth offensively, tenth defensively. Drop the coverage, year bam. That, they were eighth offensively, first defensively, and then the year before that, they were fourth. This is still this is still under Mike Budenholzer. Fourth offensively and first defensively. Drop coverage, spammer. Oh my god, stop. So, y'all y'all are getting greedy. Y'all got greedy. Y'all got greedy. Y'all nitpicked. Y'all y'all did all this fuddy duddy stuff. When there were some moves that could have been made, y'all bowed down to Giannis, because I think Giannis has some stuff to do with this as well. So y'all bowed down to Giannis, and here you are. So when you, you y'all mad at Adrian Griffin right now, I'm going to tell you something. Y'all going to be, and, and, oh, did y'all notice that Giannis didn't want Nick Nurse? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That I did know. Giannis didn't want Nick Nurse? Yeah, he didn't want yeah, Nick in Nurse. The, in the summertime, they had an opportunity. Why not? Yeah. So, so Didn't like him. Not, I don't know why, but he didn't want This is from the made him better. He would have made him. He would have challenged him as a coach. This is from the Stein line. 
League sources say now that the desire to play with, for Griffin is better described as a determination to play for someone other than Nick Nurse. Nurse was among the candidates that the Bucks had high on their list after a five-game drubbing by number eight seed at Miami in the first round of last season's playoffs. But sources say that Antetokounmpo wanted the Bucks to go in a different direction and thus chose champion Griffin. 